Hey, Board Game Geeks, Brian Hazard here. Happy Saturday morning. We're at Breakfast Club and we were thinking, we want to play Terraforming Mars, but we don't remember how. Probably should read the rule book. That would make the most sense. Unless you know Rando Brandon, who has taught this game many times for Stronghold at cons. So that means uh, he has claimed he can teach us this game in 16 minutes, 16 minutes? So, without further ado, I give you Rando Brandon Osborne and his streak of teaching Terraforming Mars in 16 minutes. Take it away, Brandon. All right, let's do this. So hopefully by now we all know what Terraforming Mars is. Um, to get started, the main objectives are to terraform Mars. How do you do that? You can raise the oxygen level, which is actually an end game condition. You can raise the temperature, also an end game condition, or you can terraform C. You guys following? Mm -hmm. Once all the C tiles have been placed on the board and oxygen is up and temp is up, that triggers end game. Mm. Now, you do that by playing cards or doing standard actions, excuse me, standard projects. Now, let's get into the basics. So we have C tiles that can only be placed in the blue tiles. We also have what are called um, greeneries, and then on the other side are cities. Now, throughout the game, you're gonna get different cards, and each card has a cost, a type, um, and a tag. Now, you have green cards, which are kind of those one-time use effects. This card here would cost three, and it would, as the card says, increase your production by one step. Now if we go over to the blue cards, blue cards are action cards. Um, same thing, cost, tag, um, and it, it allows you to do some type of action. So for this one, it says spend four energy to gain two steel and increase the oxygen by one step. So if you were to use that action on your turn, you would not only gain two steel um, to your resource pool, which I'll explain in a minute, but you would also increase the oxygen, which then increases your point total. Now. The biggest thing here is when you go up in points, we're all gonna start at 20. This is part of your income. Now, if we go down to the board, we have income, we have steel, uh, titanium, plants, energy, um, <clears throat> and heat. So going back to the cards, we've got things down here which will raise your level, which is in theory good because at the end of the game, it's all victory points. Mm. So. These cards here, one-time use effect. Now if you notice, this card has a plus two degrees Celsius. So if, as far as money, you also need to make sure that this requirement here is filled, which it states on the card, requires two degrees Celsius or warmer. Mm -hmm. So if the track is at two degrees Celsius, you can play this card. It's The requirement is met. Mm -hmm. Similar to this card over here. It says max 7% oxygen. So the oxygen must be at 7% or less. So if the card is, excuse me, if the oxygen track is here, mm -hmm. you are able to play this card. If it's at eight, you technically can't play it. However, spoilers, um, there are cards that will allow you to plus or minus this track when playing cards. Oh. So, neat mechanic. How are we doing? We're, we're only three minutes in. Now, let's get to the, the good stuff. So, in front of you, you've got the board, which is your money track. Um, so we have the broken token organizers, which are really sweet because it helps keep everything in place. Now, going through the game, you're going to get cards that will increase your money level, your steel production, your titanium production, uh, your plant production, your energy production, and your heat production. Now, the game is played over X amount of generations. So throughout the game, we're going to do actions, we're going to terraform Mars, we're going to play cards. Um, do standard projects, go through milestones, do awards, which I'll explain those all in a minute. And with that, we're gonna go into the, uh, where's the action card? Can we zoom in on this for me, please? So on your turn, it's very simple. Um, we're gonna start the game. You guys have played before, and you've, you've said that you wanted to go into the harder or the different corporations and not use the beginning corporations, mm. which is fantastic because that's when the game really gets fun. Mm. <clears throat> now, we figure out who, um, who is first player, and that's gonna rotate every every generation. Um, then we're gonna basically get cards in our hand, and we have to pick how many that we wanna keep. So we're gonna start with 10 for the very first round. Then we're gonna have to choose 
which cards we want to keep, and each card costs three. Mm. Then, th every turn after that, or every generation, we're going to get four cards, and you can keep as many as you want, still at the cost of three. So at the beginning, you get a bunch of cards you pick, and then you, you slowly get more cards as the game goes on. Mm -hmm. Once we've done that research phase, we go into the action phase, which is where we basically everything happens. So on your turn, you can take one or two actions, or pass. As an action, you can play a card in your hand. You can use a standard project, which is up here. Um, the different standard projects are you can discard cards to sell. Basically, you, one card equals one money. Mm -hmm. You can pay 11 to basically, quote unquote, build a power plant, which increases your energy production by one. Mm -hmm. You can pay 14 to, in theory, call in an asteroid, which is going to raise the heat level. <laughs> and you're awful. Yeah. Um, 18 allows you to um, build an aquifer, which is basically putting a, a water tile on Mars. Um, 23 allows you to play a greenery, which every time you play a greenery um, increases the oxygen level because you're planting and trees give oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, 25 allows you to um, build, build a city. Build a city. And then as well as um, increase your, your ME production by one. Mm. Which is important because at the end of every generation, you're going to produce, um, which is another thing that I'll get into here in a minute. And these are actions anybody can take on their turn at any time, Correct. as long as they can pay as for it. As long as you can pay for it, that's an action you can take. Okay. Um, so those are standard projects. Now we talked about actions on a blue card. So if we go back into the blue cards up here, they allow you to do X action. So this one is the, the four energy to get steel and, and raise the oxygen. Um, and then this one down here is kind of a victory point. So if you notice the symbol on the bottom of these two cards, that's basically your, your victory points at the end of the game. Mm. The moon thing. Correct. Um, when going through, if you do this action, you can only do this action one time um, a generation. So basically you just kind of say, okay, I've used this action for the turn, it's done. Um, so that's something to be wary of. Uh, that was one of the, the first mistakes that I made was using that action more than once, which can be pretty broken, so don't do that. Okay. Um, Another thing you can do on your turn as an action is convert eight plants into a greenery tile and raise the oxygen. So if you have eight plants on your board and you say, well, I'm going to make a greenery, you just pop out a greenery, put it on the board, and then you would put in your, your little marker to say that that is yours. So like eight plants would be like like that sort yep. of thing, like eight plants? Like exactly. Just, okay. Just like that. Um, you can convert eight heat to raise the temperature, um, and then you can claim a milestone, or fund an award. So we're going to break into the board a little bit more because I haven't completely explained that to you just yet. So on the board you have what are called milestones, and then you have awards on the other side. So as an action on your turn, you can say, I'm going to fund, or I'm going to achieve a milestone. So you would place, since you're the first claimer, you'd pay 8 ME, place it here, and then you would pick whichever milestone you have completed. So um, terraformer means that you've hit 35 points in the victory track. Mm -hmm. Mayor means that you've claimed three cities on Mars. Gardener is that you've claimed three uh, greeneries on Mars. Builder means that you have eight builder tags, which, if you've played eight cards with this symbol, which is a tag, you can achieve this milestone. And planner means that you have 16 cards in hand. So now only three people, or three of the same person, or however combination, can claim these milestones. But once all three have been filled, you can't fill anymore. So only three of these at most can be picked. They're worth five points at the end of the game. Hmm. Transitioning over to awards, um, similar, similar concept. However, they increase in cost from 8, 14, to 20. And if you are the landlord, it means that you have the most claim to fame on Mars, meaning that you can, you've basically terraformed the most uh, area, the most tiles. Okay. Banker means you, that you produce the most money. Scientist means that you have the most science tags, which we don't have a card with a science tag on it out, but it's basically I'm guessing a symbol. it's that? Yes, sir. It is this symbol here. So if you have the most science tags on cards played, you would be the scientist. Thermalist is whoever um, has the most heat in their pool at the mm -hmm. end of the game. And minor is whoever has the most combined titanium and steel. So thermalist is whoever has the most of this. Yep. And then the, the other one is the most, most of, of this that and, and that. that. Okay. Yep. Now for those, 
whoever is in first place would get five, and whoever is in second place would get two. So it's kind of a, someone can come in at the last minute and steal it from you. Mm. Um, so be wary of that. It's more of a, a late game play. Milestones you can get kind of whenever. It's a quick, easy five points at the end of the game. So this you activate, it's your points. This you activate, and then you're gunning for the points. Gunning for the points, exactly. Um, so the one thing we really haven't explained is your board and producing. So we've kind of talked about the different resources. Um, now, since we're going to be starting with the corporation cards and not the beginner corporations, um, it's very important to note that we're going to start at pretty much zero production of everything. So at the end of a round or the end of a generation, um, we're going to go through and we're going to produce. Now when you produce, you basically look at, look at your board um, and you say, okay, well my production for steel is two. So if my production for steel is two, um, I would then gain two steel, which these are one of the most awesome bits of the game. And my favorite part of this game is just how cool the little bits are. What are their values? So the values here are 1, um, 5, and 10. So gold is 10, silver is 5, um, bronze is 1. And to be clear, these are not money. These are anything. They Correct. That is one big thing. Uh, um, this counts for whatever. So if you have a card that says put counter, an animal counter, or anything, you would denote it using these bits. Okay. Um, so apart from that... The cool thing about this is, so your money is here. Let's do this. Yeah. That might be easier. Yeah. So we have money here, which is just going to sit up in this pool. Um, then we have steel. Now steel, if you have any amount of steel, you can use it, as the, the tray says. Each building icon, you can use a steel, and it is two money, essentially. So you can reduce the cost by using steel. Got it. Um, as far as titanium, it's the same concept, but you can use this symbol here, um, and titanium, and it's three money. So it's going to uh, basically be that building resource that right. allows you to... Then those, are, those are space cards, right? Yes, so, so those space. are space cards. These are normally uh, most likely an event card. Okay. Um, plants down here, same thing. Um, if you have a production of three, at w when we produce, we would get three. Um, and then with energy. So the cool thing with energy is if you have any here and you produce, your energy then shifts over and turns into heat at the next round. So if, if your production for for energy is three, and you do this on generation one, mm -hmm. generation two, this would shift over, and you would generate three more energy. And it looks there like it says you can spend, is that as an action you can spend eight heat to raise the temperature? Exactly. Or is that just an anytime thing? Is that it? is as an action. Okay. So everything that you do is most likely as an action. Okay. Um, there aren't any free actions in the game. So. The biggest thing here is when you're, you're terraforming Mars, there's different spaces on the board um, that represent different things. So anything that's in blue, an ocean must be placed there, nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, these symbols, as soon as you place a tile on the board, you would get two titanium. If you place this one here, you would get two plants. I hit the power button. That's not his fault. Okay, continue. All right, so back to it. So if you're placing different tiles on the board, when you place a tile, you will gain that resource. So this means draw two free cards, which is kind of a big deal. So when you place this, you would get two free cards. Um, now, going into building different things. So if you're building a greenery, you can kind of place it wherever. Um, if you're building a city, you can also place that almost wherever. There are special reserve spots on the board for different cities. Um, you have Phobos. Uh, I can't read that upside down. Uh, you have Ganymede. Thank you, sir. And you have uh, Noctis City. Um, so those are different cards that say place city on um, certain tile. Uh, apart from that, for the most part, um, you cannot build a city right next to a city. You have to be uh, at least uh, two spaces away. Now the cool thing with cities is if you build a city next to a ocean, you would get back two ME for each ocean tile that it is next to. That's money, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, beyond that, um, Cities at the end of the game are going to be worth one point for each greenery that is around a city. Okay. Um, there is a scoring card, which I will have you pull into frame to go through it. Because and greeneries and cities can't be built on the blue ocean spaces, right? Correct, unless a card tells you. So I will let you know that there is that. Um, so the scoring at the end of the game, you basically will always go up in points. You can never go backwards. Okay. Um, so that, that is very important to know. You'll never go down in points, only up. Mm -hmm. um, awards get funded. Milestones get taken into a place. Mm -hmm. um, each greenery is worth um, worth a point, and then each city is worth one point for greenery around it. And then 
at the very end of the game, if you have plants, there's one last chance to basically go through and say, I'm going to terraform Mars and I'm going to put more plants, or excuse me, more greeneries. So you can spend X amount of plants at the end of the game, pretty much once round has been triggered, the game's over, that's your last ditch effort to get things out onto the board. Um, beyond that, any time that you go up on the track, if you move anything or do any terraforming action, so let it be raising the oxygen, raising the temperature, um, or putting a greenery down, or a you know uh, an ocean tile down, you will move up on the track by one point. Um, so any terraforming action will gain you one victory point. Um, now the one last thing that I did not mention is that once you hit each break point um, on the board, so if you raise the temperature up to twenty four to negative uh, twenty four Celsius, you will gain an energy or excuse me a heat production. If someone triggers this one, same thing. This one here at zero degrees allows you to place an ocean tile. If you hit 8% humidity, you then also raise this track over here. So if you're triggering this, you also get one point for here. And then since you're going to raise the temp over here, you get one other point as well. So, if you're really lucky, you raise it right there. Exactly. So that's the quick and dirty. Um, the best way to do it is just break right into it. And how you guys doing? Any questions? No. You have completely explained this entire game with time to spare. What's the secret to the universe? Uh, the secret to the universe? Is it 47? And we're out of time. <laughs> it's 42. <laughs> so, there you go, folks. That is your uh, quick and dirty game uh, explanation for uh, Terraforming Mars by our resident professional, Rando Brandon. If you... Uh, have any questions or comments from in the section down below and thanks for joining us we'll see you on the geek take it easy <laughs> on a sub note i forgot to mention that brandon was given no chance at all to practice for his uh, terraforming mars uh teaching he was put on the spot without warning because i thought it would be funny for the record it was it, and he did a very good job i i don't want this to sound like i'm explaining away a bad job because it wasn't a bad job it was a good job However, he did want me to tell you to, that you can pass if you want. And uh, that if you pass, you can't take any further actions that round. Correct. You yeah. can take one or two actions during your turn. Thank you, sir. You can take one or two actions during your turn. Um, you do not have to take an action, but if you do decide to pass, you are done for that round. Okay. Um, it is advantageous to sometimes only take one action or an easy action, um, because then you can see what everybody else is doing. Uh, pro tips from someone who's played the game a handful of times. Mm, very good. Okay, so there we go. There. Is that is that good enough? I thought he did a great job. You don't have to. You can cave as long as your hand is covering your mouth. You're saying whatever I want you to say. I just want you to know that right now. I prefer if you speak for me, anyway. Okay. I should get you more games to review. That's fine. Game Spasm is the best channel. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, sir.